Uh, another question I was wondering about, you know, the, the whole idea of the wunderkammer and uh, as an object to think with and as a kind of an analogy for um, uh, uh, invention and arrangement, or invention, invention via arrangement. Um, you propose this as a, you know, that's kind of the, one of the key points of your of your web text, and I'm just wondering what you think of that now. I mean, how does the Wunderkammer, like, does it still hold, do you think, that it's an, an analogy that helps us understand how people are designing in new media, or are there new, other, better objects to think with? And I, I guess I'm also asking about this whole idea of wonder. You know, you, you began your text by talking about wonder, and... Um, do we still have that same kind of wonder when we're, you know, encountering digital texts and when we're trying to compose digital texts? I think we should have that same kind of wonder. Um, it's a, for me, that that space between knowing and not knowing is really fruitful, and I try to preserve it for as long as I can. <clears throat> um, I, I try not to automatically uh, associate uh, an image uh, with, an I with an idea, uh, particularly when, when we're talking about images that have been uh, um, appropriated for, pre to, to be associated with particular meanings. Um, one of the things that I'm interested in working on now has to do with the degradation of beauty as um, an, an acceptable um, an acceptable idea, I guess. They, they, we, we criticize the beautiful and, and worry about looking at, at things and, if, and so the only way we find ourselves then looking through them theoretically is uh, critically and talking about what's wrong with showing um, the uh, a picture of a beautiful woman, or of of something that that seems um, to only be beautiful, and and that, that that that's a bad thing. You know, we need to to look away. Um, and and um, so so now what I'm what I'm working on rather than thinking about just rearranging images that already exist, which is what I've, what I've worked on. I've not done much manipulation of images um, and uh, changing of images. I don't use remix, for example, a lot. Uh, but uh, the idea of finding a way, working with students, to take something and, and see it as beautiful and therefore is something worth preserving rather than something worth criticizing um, uh, uh, as a way to, to work towards social justice, mm -hmm. I think is, is very exciting right now. And you know, it's funny because that's sort of how you're, you're in your Wunderkammer piece, again, that's how you're ending by talking about your pedagogy associated with this theory. And, um, but the, what I thought is really interesting that you have a kind of final step in your pedagogy, which is to actually get students to think about how to cause, how to make change, how to like get action out of this collecting, gathering, arranging, and then you, the last step is do something. And I didn't see, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, I don't understand, I don't, I didn't see that as part of the Wunderkammer kind of uh, approach. It seems like that was something that you added to say, okay, now we've got all this and now what can this spur us to do? And I thought that was so such a fantastic way to move forward with your students. I've always had civic engagement and social responsibility as part of my pedagogy, and and I, that actually, you know, I, I moved back and forth. I think uh, between when I was when I was working particularly uh, later on the the um, the larger digital project, Technologies of Wonder. Um, moved back and forth between doing things in the classroom and then applying them to what I was thinking about uh, arrangement as an, a, an invention tool and and then back to the pedagogy, learn from my students, learn from my theory, learn from my students, learn from my theory, yeah. and it, it builds. Um, I just want to follow up and now it's totally slipped my mind what I was going to ask you about. Um, 
Well, I was just going to comment that I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, you think, okay, you do digital stuff or you do the civic engagement, you know, that they don't merge so easily because, you know, the digital and digital stuff, you think, well, somebody's just sitting in front of a computer, you know, making stuff and remixing and all that, but you have to have that. But I think they do, you know, come together nicely. Your web text gives one really good example of that with that Mansfield prison project or they, you know, the, the reform. Reformatory. Reformatory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. I have another question too. Um, you know, both of your texts, the Wunderkammer text and then the Inventio text, are are big texts. Wunderkammer text, especially, is it's a big web text. There's a lot of pieces to it. There's you know the kind of two full examples that you will you know that you kind of theorize with Wunderkammer and Joseph Cornell, and then you've got the pedagogy piece. And I mean, it's just a large text. And I sort of wonder what you what your thoughts are about that as an aspect of uh, of maybe. I don't know if that's changed or not, if that's kind of the way we're still approaching these texts. And I ask because, you know, as the Inventio editor, uh, the Inventio texts are also all very, you know, large and complex, mostly. And I just wonder how, what the implications are of that. That's an interesting question. Um, for me, the size of my texts comes from probably a bad habit of not wanting to throw anything away or to save it for later. I think Annie Dillard said something about, you know, when you get this beautiful idea, don't save it for a better uh, publication venue or another project, you know, use it. And I, as things come to me, I just want to use them. And, um, and, and also the chunking things instead of creating something that feels like a chapter but, it, but rather has has multiple parts that don't necessarily have a real solid connection one to the other um, is also some a, a way that I'd like to build arguments and think about arguments um, when I was working on my dissertation uh, my director Nan Johnson um, would kind of constantly write in the margins, um, all pearls and no necklace. And and I think that's actually what my texts are. <laughs> that's um, great. They're, they're just individual chunks of things that are loosely connected. Um, I wouldn't say so loosely. I mean, I think, you know, that's the Wunderkammer, right? A small piece is loosely connected, but I think you're, they're, they're not so loosely connected. And especially in the Inventio piece, you know, because you go, you really, you hit all the major questions and you provide really beautiful answers to them. So, I mean, and and they're all connected because it's all a question of digital composing and, and scholarship, digital scholarship as well. Right. Um, maybe we can move on to the question of curation. What concerns do you have about the degradation of digital texts? I mean, yours in particular, but maybe more generally, all these best web texts that we have. Uh, how are they gonna? How are they gonna stand the test of time? <laughs> I think work like mine won't. Uh, I, I think that over time, I don't know how much time uh, the ability to see. Uh, texts that are created, you know, at a moment in time when there was a program like Flash. Um, uh, uh, it's still possible to, to see um, Anne's Bookling Monument, but, but it's harder to do it than it used to be. And I imagine mine will get harder and harder to see. Uh, one option, of course, is creating a new edition. Um, of of a text, um, but I also think that that placement in 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 a particular time and space is uh, important. Um, I have to say I do not have the obsession that some people have about the survival of their work. Um, I, and I, I know curation is important, and I know we need to preserve and find different ways for, um, for all of the magical texts that there are out there uh, that, we, that we need to preserve, historical texts and, and contemporary texts too. But I 
it, it, I don't worry that mine won't be available for people to, to look at later because other things will have superseded it, partly because it was a, about and of its time. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and what are you working on now? Um, I'm working on the Beauty Project uh, right now. I, I uh, well, another th another thing that I'm playing with is to, uh, creating small digital objects like they're like apps really um, that I can use with my students to to um, do different kinds of transformations and play around with uh, with the visual um, th that they can kind of create their own databases of images and and work with. Um, but that's that's kind of peripheral. I'm not sure whether that'll end to a big project like, but I am very interested now in the the the, the, uh, the idea of, of beauty and recuperating it a little bit for use as a rhetorical and social engagement strategy um, to, so the to students not would be kind of creating beauty is that how it would work I mean they would sort of take something that isn't necessarily beautiful or not but it tra trying to render it beautiful in some way or is it uh, that's that's one possibility and I, an example that I've used is the wonderful oh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting the photographer's name but there's an amazing photograph that reminds me of Grant Wood's uh, American Gothic but it's a uh, an image of um, a black woman who's a cleaner um, at a um, government uh, building and she's standing straight um, broom mop in one hand American flag behind her columns behind her and there's such a, a majesty and dignity to that photograph that it it can turn people from thinking um, about poverty and um, the things that go along with it, um, not as a, just a problem that maybe other people will solve and or that's just the government's job or whatever, into something uh, where you yourself have the impulse to want to preserve that kind of dignity for everybody. So that's, it's in its early stages, obviously. That's, really, that's very interesting. And then the earlier project that you described is that where you said you're having, you're doing these kind of little apps or where students can kind of create a database of their own images and so on. I mean, that almost sounds like it's a kind of follow up on the Wonderkammer idea or Joseph Cornell's work with, you know, gathering and then selecting and arranging. Is that, is there, is there, is there that element to it? 